Hey guys, let's get more news from Dallas Cowboys, but first don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your like. Cowboys five-time pro bowler needs surprising surgery, report. Give credit to the Cowboys' Stefan Gilmore. He tried. Turns out, perhaps, he should not have played on Sunday in the blowout loss to the Packers that ended the Dallas Cowboys' season in disastrous fashion, but he showed more guts than many of his teammates. Trouble is, now Gilmore needs surgery to repair a torn labrum in the injured shoulder that limited him in practice ahead of the postseason game. Gilmore did not want to let the injury keep him from helping the team on a Super Bowl run. Instead, the injury helped end the Cowboys' season and will need a surprising surgery that should, according to the Dallas Morning News, happen this week. It's surprising that Gilmore, who is 33 and just wrapped up his 12th NFL season, needs surgery on the shoulder, or, rather, it is surprising that he tried to play with a shoulder that was so injured. But the five-time pro bowler knows he does not have many more chances at winning a Super Bowl, he won one in New England in 2018, and did not want to shortchange himself. I'm going on towards the end, Gilmore said, per the morning news. I tried to give it all I've got. I still felt like I could play. Tried to give it a go. Got to take advantage of these opportunities. The problem is that Gilmore, who was very good all season and helped the Cowboys overcome the loss of star corner Trayvon Diggs to ACL surgery, struggled mightily against the Packers. The numbers at Pro Football Focus show that Jordan Love threw at the man Gilmore was covering four times and completed all four passes. One went for a touchdown, to Dontavian Wicks. The average pass at Gilmore yielded 20.3 yards. Love had a perfect 158.3 passer rating when targeting Gilmore. They were hot and we wasn't able to stop them, especially on the defensive side. We wasn't able to get into a rhythm. I think they only punted one time. That's ultimately what it came down to, Gilmore said in his post-game meeting with the media. They was running the ball, they got into short yardage. They were able to pass the ball here and there and we just couldn't get into rhythm. We didn't force no turnovers, and they just played well today. Gilmore had high praise for Love, who has gotten better as the Packers season went on. The Cowboys' secondary had few answers for them, and the shoulder injury for Gilmore did not much anything. He's a good quarterback, they got in this position for a reason, Gilmore said. Three overreactions from Packers' playoff victory over Cowboys. In 1995, the Green Bay Packers were in year four of the Mike Holmgren and Brett Favre era. After losing in the divisional round at Dallas in the 1993 and 1994 playoffs, the Packers played a divisional round game at the defending Super Bowl champion San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers, who finished 11-5 despite 1994 NFL MVP Steve Young missing five midseason games, were 9.5-point favorites against the Packers. After Green Bay's drive to an open field goal was blocked, came one of the most memorable plays in Packers playoff history. Steve Young threw a pass into the flat to Adam Walker. He was hit almost immediately by linebacker Wayne Simmons. Cornerback Craig Newsom scooped up the loose ball and raced 31 yards for a touchdown. Game over. Packers 27, 49ers 17. It was a similar story of domination on Sunday. In his first playoff start, Jordan Love was impeccable. Aaron Jones and Romeo Dew were unstoppable. The defense even scored a touchdown on Darnell Savage's pick six. Up next, a divisional round game at the 49ers. Here are our weekly overreactions. That win at San Francisco in 1995 served notice that the Packers were on their way to a championship. They didn't get it done in 1995. They lost at Dallas in the NFC Championship game, but they won it all in 1996. Who knows if the Packers will win a Super Bowl next year. Or next month, for that matter. But they are on their way. In a conversation about love last week, a team executive from an NFC team was in awe of how quickly love has blossomed into a star. Like everyone else, he had doubts about love when he looked unsure and threw inaccurately through the first half of the season. The second half of the season, however, has been a quarterbacking clinic of throwing with anticipation and accuracy. The executive predicted Love would be the Packers' next MVP quarterback. 
more importantly, he also predicted at least two Super Bowls. He's so calm, the executive said. Nothing bothers him. Aaron Rodgers wanted to win a second Super Bowl so badly that I think he got tied in big games and he didn't trust anyone but his favorite guys to make a play. I don't see any of that in Jordan. Not to talk anything away from Aaron, but you'd almost rather have Jordan just playing and not overanalyzing everything. He's the real deal. The 49ers' physicality and abundance of weapons is going to be a problem on Saturday. But just like the Packers in 1995 with Favre winning his first MVP, only a fool would bet against these Packers who, interestingly enough from a historical perspective, are 9.5-point underdogs. Cowboys have three-day window to save $34 million by trading Dak Prescott. The Dallas Cowboys are approaching a major moment in recent franchise history as they determine their future with quarterback Dak Prescott. Both Prescott's and head coach Mike McCarthy's jobs are under scrutiny, but moving on from either of them is not as simple as ripping up the contract. F. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones thinks it's time to bail on Dak, it will not be easy or cheap. Back in September, ESPN's Dan Graziano explained how the Cowboys could save $34 million by trading Prescott before his roster bonus kicks in on March 17. If we get to March and the Cowboys, for whatever reason, have decided they don't want to extend Prescott, then things get interesting, Graziano wrote. Prescott's 2024 money is not guaranteed. The Cowboys could cut or trade him prior to paying the March roster bonus and save $34 million on their 2024 cap. For context, his roster bonus for 2024 is $5 million, according to Over the Cap. One obstacle that would face the Cowboys if they wanted to deal Prescott is the league's trading rule, which prohibits trading until 4 p.m. Eastern Time on March 13. That would leave them about three days to trade Prescott before his money became guaranteed. The 48-32 loss to the Green Bay Packers saw Prescott struggle mightily. He didn't have a single passing yard entering the second quarter, and his ensuing pick-six put Dallas behind the eight ball. Prescott just had his best season in a Cowboys uniform, but Jones has an out if he's seen enough. With just one year remaining on Prescott's contract, the Cowboys need to make a decision. Of course, they could let the deal ride another year and then try and renegotiate in 2025. But then Prescott will be a free agent, and the Cowboys could be forced to move on rather than have the choice. There is a major catch with trading him this offseason, Prescott's no-trade clause. Cowboys Wire's K.D. Drummond wrote that Prescott can veto any destination the team wants to send him to. And if the Cowboys want to trade Prescott, he'll be able to refuse a trade to any team he doesn't want to go to, likely lessening Dallas' position of strength in demanding multiple first-round picks in return, Drummond wrote on January 16. There will certainly be suitors for Prescott if the Cowboys try to trade him. But a short window in which to make a deal and Prescott's no-trade clause could make things complicated. After the loss to the Packers, Prescott was asked about McCarthy's job security. To the Cowboys' QB, there's no question about McCarthy sticking around. He's been amazing. I don't know how there can be questions about his status, but I understand the business, Prescott said. In that case then there should be about me, as well, honestly. And you fan, what do you think of the Dak Prescott situation, leave your opinion in the comments.